Hello everyone, my name is Adu and this is Ready Go Expat. In today's video, we go to the land of the rising sun, Japan. And in this video, David McNeil is going to talk about the cost of living in Tokyo and things to do in the city. Ready? Go! Yeah, there's high expectation with the Olympics there. Of course, that's what people are talking about and stuff. But um, is it the most expensive city in Japan? I guess I don't have the numbers, you know, in front of me in terms of comparing that exactly, but I would have to guess that it is. If not one of, then it must be uh, the, the highest uh, cost of living there. It is, uh, I would put it this way. I think people, especially when they tour and travel to Japan, they really get a sense that it's extremely expensive. And I think the reason for that is probably, well, number one, there's a bit of that mentality back from the 80s when Japan was extremely expensive. I mean, it was like a huge bubble that has since burst in the 90s, and they're still kind of feeling the reverberations of that today. However, um, I think the real estate, of course, especially if you look at it on a per square foot or square meter basis, it's extremely expensive. This is, this is without a doubt the case. It would be hard to find three bedroom, four bedroom flats in the middle of Tokyo that is going to be affordable. I mean, it's definitely going to be... Um, yeah, you'd have to move outside the city quite a bit or get a, a big contract and a company to help you make that happen. Um, so I would not, uh, I would say, yeah, people who have to pay for hotel every night, if they don't go to the capsule hotels, which people might've heard of, or some of these situations where it's a really small room, even a literal capsule that you sleep in, which I've done that. And it's not that much fun, but it's an interesting experience. <laughs> um, if you're not doing that and you're going to a normal hotel, it will add up. This is for sure. However, you can find some reasonably priced uh, flats there long term. And certainly if you go just outside the downtown area, I was in the center of kind of the downtown uh, area. My work was in Shibuya, which is where that famous intersection the, is yeah. from Lost in Translation. So I, I mean, I was, you know, 10 minute walk from there in terms of the office. And I was probably 30 minute walk from the office to where I was living, which was in a, a very nice area. So I was, I was fortunate. I was definitely fortunate to find this flat. However, it was extremely small and extremely expensive. So if I'm really thankful, to be honest, that I'm not living in that flat right now in the midst of this pandemic, because it was only, I, I, I got it with the mentality that I wouldn't be spending much time there, that I'd always be out and about exploring. So I think trying to work and live in that, you know, permanently during a, during a pandemic would be a challenge, but uh I think the housing and so on is very expensive. However, the daily costs, I mean, you can get an incredible bowl of ramen or whatever. I, I love Japanese food and I know a lot of other people out there do as well. You can get incredible food for seven, eight dollars. Uh, you know, you can get a lunch meal, a business lunch meal at whatever uh, izakaya, whatever little restaurant for the same price or less, you know, 500 yen or 700 yen. Um, you can do it expensively. <laughs> That's the thing. It, it depends what people want to go for. So it's hard to give a broad overview of the cost of living there. However, I think it it can definitely work for people that live there as long as you're not going crazy every night doing everything that Tokyo has to offer. So um, you kind of have to feel it out for yourself. You you said that uh, the cost of living like rent. Um, you lived in a very nice place, uh, small but very, you know, centrally located. And, and so you said that rent was, uh, is the most expensive thing, right? Uh, right. But yeah. what about groceries and transportation? Like, I'm, I, I assume that you didn't have a car there because you right. know, the, the subway system and, and stuff in Tokyo is amazing. I mean, that's what I've heard. So can you tell yeah. me about a bit about like groceries, transport, and maybe, I don't know, health insurance, any other costs you might have? Yeah, let me think back to it a bit. So I probably won't have exact numbers for you, but in general, yeah, I, I personally haven't lived uh, with a car since I was in high school. So even in the United States, even when I was working here, I tried to live more centrally and be able to walk or use buses and things like that. Naturally in Japan, as everyone knows, the railway is incredible. So yeah. getting around the city is very easy, many options. It's coming constantly. Of course, you might have to squeeze your way in, but um, that's just part of the overall experience and it might get it might get tiring over time but at first it's it's just uh, just an experience i actually felt a bit though like i was getting going a little crazy with being on the trains because you're just 
underground for long periods of time, you know, from this train to that train. And so that was also not that everyone gets the opportunity, but being able to walk to work, even if it took 30 minutes, I really appreciated that because it gave me an opportunity just to get a little exercise and to be outside. So I think you can go a little nuts if you're <laughs> having to ride the train, even if it's so efficient for every day for an hour plus or whatever it might be, which, which a lot of people do to commute into Tokyo. Um, so in terms of some of the other costs, mostly, yeah, to be honest, I love Japanese food and I'm not much of a cook. So I was mostly eating out uh, and also, you know, trying to go out with friends and things like that. So I would usually try to get something around the corner. And there were so many great restaurants there that even when I went back the last time in 2019, most recently, it was just, yeah, going to my old favorite spots. And like I said, it can be 500 yen, 700 yen, up to a thousand yen, which is probably, I don't know what that is in the exact exchange rate now, but let's say eight euros or some up to eight euros for some incredible food. Uh, on the health insurance side, I was working for a company, so I didn't, I don't think I had to pay too much specifically for that. I can't remember what, if any, was taken out of my paycheck. But in general, the way that it works there is that the state or the company, you know, effectively somebody else is paying 70% and you're typically paying 30% of the costs. And yeah, like I said, I'm, you know, people are probably thinking about going to the, the place that I dream of, what Jiro dreams of sushi, I think it's called, is that movie, the documentary where people are thinking about having this amazing sushi. You know, I would go to the, um, to the conveyor belt sushi and just get some plates there for, you know, 15 euros and I was just completely stuffed. So you can, you can go pretty crazy with your expenses there. But for me, it was important to also leave money for travel. And I mean, that's, that's been a big part of my life and everywhere that I've lived, I've tried to budget around travel. So maybe on a day-to-day -day basis, I wouldn't spend too crazy in Tokyo. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Um, it is the image that I had that, uh, that I still have that Tokyo is super expensive, not only Tokyo, but Japan. Uh, travel around Japan and stuff. If you could go back there again, what would be like the first thing you do? You know, what would be your perfect day in Japan? I mean, there's so much food that I would have to consume. So if it were a perfect day and I had an endless appetite, I'm sure I would have, <laughs> you know, well, so one of the things, I guess I can say one of the things that I love is Japanese curry. And luckily that's something that you can, like there's an Asian market here. So we're able to get the the cubes, the blocks to be able to make it here. So I don't, I don't miss that like crazy because I get it frequently, but that's something that I would love to have in Japan. Again, they always like the best, the best mix. Um, but of course the ramen and everything else. And then, yeah, if I was in Tokyo, I would um, definitely try to meet up with one of my close friends there. There are some cool areas in Japan and Tokyo in particular, like um, Shimokitazawa is this really cool area. Um, it, you just kind of walk around. It's got a lot of hip shops. I mean, you know, nothing special, not that I'd go out and probably buy anything, but just going into different little stores, art, art boutiques, um, uh, you know, clothing stores, all kinds of different little stuff. Maybe go to the game arcade, play some games, get some, uh, you know, something out of the claw machine, <laughs> you know, uh, just, just soaking it in, to be honest, just walking as much as I could um, in the city. Yeah, I think just, again, like the huge skyscrapers, the big lights, the, the big displays, just taking it all in, you know, throughout the day. I think that would be my main priority. And then sleep in a capsule hotel, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, if I could afford more, I'm, I'm not sure if I would pick that one. But, you know, uh, uh, this is a good point, though. So a major thing that my wife and I did when we went on that trip in 2019 is that we made sure the places that we stayed, the hotels, had uh, a bathhouse, an onsen. So that we could go, like, you go into the, the bath, it's super hot, you know, you, it was actually on the top floor of the hotel. So then if you, if you're inside, you can't really see so much outside, there's the windows there, but then you can open the, the, win the door windows, and then you go outside, and it was just like cold, you know, nice and chilly, but then you get in the warm water, and you're looking out across Neo Tokyo, like in Akira, you know, anime style, like, it just, it, it looks like a different world. And maybe people have been to Hong Kong know what I'm talking about, but that kind of like skyscrapers everywhere sort of feel. And yeah, it felt, it's just such an amazing experience. <laughs> <laughs>